Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This chapter, we're going to talk about telescopes. Uh, telescopes are the tools of astronomy, and the important ones are rock stars in the astronomy community. This, of course, is a picture of the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, which was launched in 1990. Uh, most of you who are taking this class have been born after Hubble was launched. Those of us who are older remember the first time we saw Hubble images and how incredibly uh, jaw-dropping they were. They were quite amazing. What we're going to talk about in this lesson is types of telescopes for two reasons. One, you need to understand the tools of astronomy. What do astronomers do? How do they actually acquire the information they need in order to make important advances in science? The second purpose is some of you at the completion of this course are going to want to go out and buy a small telescope for your home use. And so you need to know a little bit of background about what makes up a telescope, what makes a good telescope, um, what are some of the challenges in optical observations. There are two basic types of telescopes out there. One called refractors, the other one called reflectors. Refractors involve lenses, just like your eyeglasses or the lens in your eye, and these actually bend light in order to bring it to a focus. Reflectors involve mirrors, and these mirrors do the same thing. The light comes in and it is brought to a focus. So we're going to talk about how both of these telescopes kind of are put together, the basic types, and uh, some of the challenges. We're going to start with a discussion about lenses. Now all telescopes, reflectors and refractors, work because light travels in straight lines. We talked about this in a previous lesson of the idea that it doesn't matter what type of electromagnetic wave you have, whether it is visible, ultraviolet, or infrared, light travels in a straight line. And telescopes use that idea to collect light and focus it. Now the two different kinds of lenses that are out there are convex and concave. A convex lens is also called a converging lens. What it does is it takes the beams of light and the beams of light that come through that lens are all bent to come together at a focus or focal point. That's what a convex lens does. We will do a telescope lab later in the course and you will work with both types of lenses. Convex lenses are fatter in the middle. Um, you can tell by feeling them or by their cross section that that's the shape of a convex lens. A concave lens has a shape that goes in like the mouth of a cave. And what a concave lens does is it spreads out beams of light. It's also called a diverging lens. And so a beam of light that comes in will actually be spread out. And at the moment you might be thinking, why do I want to spread light out? Well, you need to do a little of both in optics in order to get crisp, clear images. Concave lenses are skinny in the middle, and if you look at them or feel them, they have a dish or spoon, inside of a spoon sort of shape. When lenses or mirrors are used to focus light, the point at which the light focuses is called the focal point. Um, sometimes it's called the focal point, other times it is called the focus. If you were ever a little kid, well you were probably a little kid, but if you ever took a magnifying glass and the sun and focused the light down to one tiny little point, that tiny little point was the focus or focal point. And it can be used, the sun's energy can be multiplied or, or, or magnified in this way in order to light paper on fire or do other things that your mother probably would rather you didn't do. The distance from the lens to that focal point is called the focal length. 
focal length. So that's the distance from the lens to the point where the light focuses. It's called focal length. Some lenses are very, very, very skinny and have very long focal lengths. You see these in when you're looking at sports photographers on the side of a football game. Their cameras are very, very long. The lenses inside are very, very thin because they're trying to capture a good picture of something that's happening way on the other side of the field. If you have a fat lens, a fat lens, it is going to have a short focal length. Classic example of that is a magnifying glass. Magnifying glasses are quite thick, but they only work for a few inches away from the piece of paper. So the length of the tube is, a relate, is related, but not always a good indicator, of the focal length. Let's talk about eyeglasses. Um, when we are together in class, we will examine some lenses, and you're going to examine some of your glasses or your classmates' glasses. People who are nearsighted have diverging or concave lenses. Concave lenses, remember, go in like the mouth of a, pay, of a cave. What happens is this. If you are nearsighted, and the reason I have a picture of a young lady here is because nearsightedness is more common in the young. The light comes into your eye and it focuses in front of the retina. The retina is the back of your eyeball full of a bunch of light sensing cells that sends neurological impulses to your brain. If the image is focused in front of that retina, what happens is the light that hits the retina is actually blurry. So what your opt optometrist will do is prescribe for you concave or divergent lenses. The light comes in, it gets spread out a little bit because the combination of this lens spreading the light out, your internal lens focusing the light, and they adjust it so that the light focuses exactly on that retina, exactly where it should be to give you a crisp image. People who are older tend to be farsighted, meaning they can see far, they cannot see close. Farsightedness are people who basically need reading glasses. Um, we all have seen older people that as they get older, they've got to hold the paper further and further and further away from their eyes and attempt to see it. An optometrist would prescribe converging or convex lenses to fix that problem. Because here's what's going on. For a far-sighted person, the light rays actually are going to focus behind the retina. So far behind that what is actually hitting your light sensing cells is blurry. So a convex lens, fat in the center, will help bring the light together a little bit and then your internal lens will bring it together the rest of the way and the combo means you'll get a nice crisp image on your retina. When lenses or mirrors are used to produce an image, there are two kinds of images. One is called a real image. The other one is called a virtual image. A real image is defined as one that can be focused on a screen. Um, if you look at the screen in front of a classroom, that is a real image. Real meaning it can be focused somewhere in space. There's a spot in space where it focuses cleanly. Now the opposite of that is something referred to as a virtual image. Every time you look into a mirror, you are seeing a virtual image. The virtual image cannot be projected onto a screen. You, I, the observer, must look into the device to see the image. So if you look through a lens at a flower, etc., that is a virtual image. You're looking in through the device. This person is looking into the mirror to see her image. So if you are looking in and the image is inside the lens, that is called a virtual image. If it goes up on a screen, it's called real image. All right, that will end that lesson. We're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about refracting telescopes.